Population growth, increased urbanization, economic development and pressure on the Earth's natural resources are threats to human, animal and environmental health. More people live today in urban environments and they've migrated from the rural areas. To feed the cities, we need to produce more food. Intensive livestock agriculture, uh, the raising of, of poultry or swine, particularly in peri-urban or close to the cities, in great numbers, is a perfect environment for disease emergence, as we saw with uh, H5N1 avian influenza in Southeast Asia. Well, livestock are the weakest link in global health. Um, livestock connects environmental health and human health in many different ways. And these connections are changing in a globalized world. We need to grow uh, much more efficiently uh, the livestock sector than we've done in the past. That means intensification is necessary, but intensification needs to be managed in a way that animal welfare, pollution, and also the disease issue, antibiotic issues, for example, are managed much more carefully. We live in a globalized world. Millions of people travel every day. Long distances are covered fast. An incubation period is the time when a patient uh, is infected and until the time that person shows clinical signs. And that incubation period can be anywhere between days to maybe a few weeks. In the case of international travel, this occurs within hours. So you can become infected in one part of the world, and when you travel to another part of the world, a few hours later, you could actually develop the clinical signs in that uh, neighboring country or across the world. African swine fever, when it entered into Eastern Europe, was through the importation or of garbage that was uh, uh, fed to pigs. And pigs came down with African swine fever. And today we have the disease spreading into several countries of Eastern Europe and threatening Western Europe as well as Asia. Forested areas are cut down to expand cropland, which increases contact between humans, livestock and wildlife. Endemic diseases in a wildlife forested area have probably been occurring there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. So when a new host, let's say a human or, or cattle, enter into that cycle, they may encounter new vectors or new pathogens that they have never seen before. Nipah virus is an interesting example. Here we were expanding in certain parts of the world swine production in the midst of date palm cultivation. And by encroaching into the forests, we do encounter bats. The bats carrying the virus will contaminate the palm date sap. Humans and pigs that drink the sap or eat the fruits will be affected. Climate change alters temperature, humidity, and seasonality. It directly impacts on the survival of microbes in the environment. With uh, more rains or more precipitation, we would likely see more bugs, mosquitoes, flies, ticks. And we know that some of these vectors carry microbes with them, whether it's dengue, malaria, Rift Valley fever, or chikungunya. The livestock sector is very exposed to climate change. Also given the fact that a lot of livestock production is taking place in very marginal environments which will be particularly exposed to climate change. And that will affect the livelihoods of many of the partial lists and smallholders that FAO is concerned about. The livestock sector is an important emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. But the more important fact is that the potential for reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the livestock sector with the wider application of available technologies 
is substantial. New infectious diseases are appearing. Old ones can return. The poor are most vulnerable and carry the heaviest burden. Every minute that we let pass without addressing disease at its source is time lost. The Food and Agriculture Organization and its partners advocate an integrated and interdisciplinary approach to global health. We call upon all stakeholders, especially the decision makers within governments, international organizations, civil society, private sector, research institution and academia to actively promote this innovative perspective to save lives and save livelihoods. <music>